Okay, it says I am connected. Gotcha. Okay, so it is working. It is working. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> good. I am working. We're doing this live. <laughs> Good morning, friendship family. Um, I preached the sermon at 11 and then realized that I had done something wrong. And um, when I closed everything out, I saw all of these uh, Facebook posts wondering where I was. Um, I was actually preaching but you all didn't hear it, Dwayne did. So um, I'm gonna give this another shot and hopefully this will work this time. Um, I used to preach uh, twice on Sunday, every Sunday when I had a two point charge. So doing the same sermon twice is pretty, uh, pretty normal for me. Uh, I wanna start with a few announcements. All of our activities um, through April the 4th are canceled. Um, I know that we had a council meeting for planned for this evening. Um, we also had Bible studies planned um, this week and all of those are canceled. And on April the 4th, we'll reassess and kind of see what's going on and um, then figure it out from there. We will gather here again, hopefully next week at 11 o'clock um, and have our uh, time together then. Uh, Kathy Richards did a children's sermon, and that is on the uh, kids' Facebook page, the Christian Kids' Facebook page, and I'll try to um, post that video on um, our church Facebook page, but you can tell that I am not very technologically savvy, uh, but I'll do my best. But do um, have your kids, uh, help your kids to be able to see that. Um, ben is working to upload the sermons um, to YouTube so that um, we can share them with others and then also uh, creating some DVDs. I know that we have some folks who are not able to be online at all and so to be able to connect them um, we're going to do our best to get DVDs to them so that they can um, feel more connected. Um, and as the work of the church continues, the bills of the church continue to come in. And so I just want to encourage you to go ahead and mail your um, offerings in. Um, just mail them to the church address, 907 Friendship Road. And that is uh, zip code 2862, Statesville 2862. And then finally, uh, Susan Williams wants to um, thank Willa, Abby, and Kaylee for the thinking of you card that they sent to her. Um, so I think that is all of the announcements that I have. If you have other announcements for the um, congregation, if you email those to me, I'll make sure that they get out in the newsletter or I'll do my best to get the information to folks. Um, and so let us begin this morning with prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you so much for this ability to be able to connect even as we are in our homes. And God, we thank you for the, the wisdom behind modern technology, even when those of us um, who aren't very good at it fumble. God, we pray your blessings upon this time. God, we pray for each and every person who is being affected right now by this virus, those who are having to stay in homes, those who are sick, those who are caring for loved ones, and those who are grieving. God, we pray a special blessing upon our medical professionals as they seek to, to help and to heal. God, we ask for courage and we ask for strength for each and every one of them. For all of those, God, who um, are connected to our families, we pray. For all of those who are in need, we pray. God, we know that in this time that there's lots of folks who are um, out of work. 
And so God, we, we pray a special blessing and we pray for your provisions. And God, as those who seek to follow you, as those who seek to be your disciples, as those who claim Jesus as Lord and Savior, we now pray that prayer that he taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, our scripture lesson this morning um, comes from the Gospel of John. And I'm going to read the first five verses of the first book. And this is um, generally a, a passage that we hear at Christmas, but I think it works this morning um, with our topic. So I'll be reading John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 14. Hear now the word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You pray with me. Holy God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh God, for truly you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A musician Bruce Carroll did a song in 1990. The name of the song is Who Will Be Jesus? I posted it on our Facebook page on Thursday. And if you haven't listened to it, you might enjoy listening to it following the message today. Anyway, the lyrics are beautiful. And to our question for today, where is God? And I want to share with you a portion of those lyrics. Wounded people everywhere. And when they look at us, do they see Jesus there? Who will be Jesus to them? Who'll show the love that restores them again? Oh, they do not need a judge. They need a friend. Who will be Jesus to them? And isn't that ministry, really? Being Jesus with skin on. Whenever and wherever the Holy Spirit directs us, as we go in Jesus' name, we represent Jesus. Now this week in our, our Bible study, um, the Bible study that we're doing, Creed, focuses on the Apostles' Creed. And we focused on the portion of the Apostles' Creed, uh, the, the portion that is about Jesus. The part that really jumped out at me and has stayed with me this week is the part about the virgin birth, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. And of course, we had some conversation about Mary in our uh, Bible study. And as I continued to think about the sermon and to think about the things that we had studied, Mary continued to come back up in my mind. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, Mary is called by the Greek name Theotokos. Theo, of course, is translated God. Tokus is loosely translated as giving birth or bearer. Mary is the God bearer, both literally and theologically. As followers of Christ, being indwelled by the Holy Spirit, we too are God bearers. We too are Theotokos. When Bruce Carroll asked who will be Jesus to them, although the lyrics would not work, um, he's asking who will be Theotokos, who will be a God bearer for them. John 1 verse 14, and the word became flesh and lived among us 
and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This word, um, the, translated from the Greek word logos, word in Greek is logos, but it's more than just word. Logos is God's wisdom, God's reason, God's divine order the word that spoke creation into being. This word became flesh. This word lived among us. Jesus was fully human and fully God all at the same time. And it's hard to even fathom to wrap our minds around that. But God is bigger than we can ever fully understand. But we do know that in the person of Jesus, Jesus was fully human and fully divine all at the same time. And in the person of Jesus, God came to earth to live among us as one of us. God entered the human story. God endured the human condition, felt the suffering and felt the elation, felt grief, felt joy, everything it means to be human. The word became flesh and lived among us, lived as one of us. And God did this incarnation through a peasant girl named Mary. It is through Mary that the word was born some 2000 years ago in a stable, surrounded by animals that this word made flesh had spoken into existence in the beginning. Through a human body that this word made flesh had spoken into existence in the beginning. The incarnation, the word made flesh, Jesus, is our proof that God actively participates in the world God created. God did not create the world and set it aside and leave it to itself. God fully participates in our world. And for just a moment, consider leaving everything you know as normal and entering an unsafe, even hostile environment, weak and small and dependent. This is exactly what happened in that stable in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. But even more, this was God, creator of the universe. This was out of God's great love for us. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So that brings us back to our question, where is God? If you had asked me that question when I was 10 years old, I would have said God is in heaven. And I would have been partially right. However, as we grow and as we learn, we come to understand the work of the Holy Spirit, this third person of the Trinity. We come to understand how it is that God continues the incarnation and God is not only in heaven. Hear Jesus' words to his disciples. This is John chapter 14, verses 15 through 17. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Through the Holy Spirit, the incarnation continues as God is at work in the world through believers who have given their lives to be used by God. The Word became flesh some 2,000 years ago and lived among us for 33 years. And this was the time, this, the last three years, the time of his ministry is recorded in the four Gospels that we have. And through those Gospels, we know that Jesus brought ideas that were contrary to the beliefs of the time. And we know that he often spent time with questionable folks. And we know that he healed the lame and he healed the sick and he touched and healed the leper. And see, in this time when folks were sick, they were pushed out of the community. Jesus, by healing them, brought them back in to their communities. And we know that he treated women and children as whole persons. We know that he wasn't hampered by ethnicity or race. 
we know that he spoke truth to power even at the risk of his own life. He angered the religious leaders and he became a problem for the political leaders. And in so doing, he was nailed to a cross. The word became flesh, lived among us, and we nailed him to a cross. God visited us as one of us and we nailed him to a cross. But our sin and the power of death had no power over him. He defeated them both and three days later he rose again. And as he returned to glory, he sends an advocate. Now think about that for just a minute. The creation, the created, we nail him to a cross. As he returns to glory, he then sends an advocate, the spirit of truth to abide with the disciples and to be in the disciples. Literally, the word took up residence in these disciples, the bodies of these believers. The disciples then became Theotokos, God bearers. And at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit showed up and showed out, empowering these disciples who were once afraid now. They stand in the face of danger and they proclaim Jesus as the Christ. And on that day, thousands were added to their number. The believers, the number grew and grew and they lived so differently for the time that they were mercilessly persecuted. But the Holy Spirit was with these early followers and with the followers who came after. And down through the ages, this story has been repeated over and over and over again. Thousands are added, millions are added, ten millions are at, tens of millions are added to the number. The Holy Spirit working through the church, the body of Christ through the church. God has fed the hungry and taught the hungry to offer the bread of life. God, through the church, has given drink to the thirsty and taught the thirsty to offer living water. The church has built hospitals and schools and orphanages. The church can be found ministering in war-torn areas and in inner cities and in rural communities. The church can be found praising God in prisons and under bridges and by deathbeds and in birthing rooms. The church, the people of God, these are God-bearers. Where is God? Well, God is in every act of love in every ministry done in God's name. Now, as the spread of COVID-19 continued and our schools began to close down, our churches closing down, we were all moving into our homes and, and drawing away and becoming socially distant. I began to get calls and emails and text messages. And I want to share a few of those with you this morning. In one text I got, um, meal delivery for students would be a great way for friendship to serve the community. Where is God? Well, right there in the heart of a disciple, God is at work through us. And then another text, while this COVID-19 stuff is going on, can we make our seasoned members aware that if they need groceries, gas, medicines picked up, anything, that I will be happy to help arrange that. Where is God? Right there in the heart of that disciple. God is at work through us. Another text, should we put something in place for our elderly during the next weeks if they need anything? I'd be happy to try my best to help them out. Where is God? Well, God is right there in the heart of a disciple. God is at work through us. And from a conversation that I had on Monday night with a couple of disciples, how about we offer Wi-Fi at the church for people who don't have it at home, especially students and folks working remotely? And you've likely already seen the sign out front that says Wi-Fi in the fellowship hall. And the fellowship hall has been set up with everything you may need, hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes. And they even left some snacks and a place to leave prayer request. Where is God? right there in the hearts of this group of disciples. God is working through us. And after I had written this manuscript for this sermon, the calls and the texts and the emails continued to come in. And I've got several of them on post-it notes. Um, I could do a Facebook Live children's sermon every week. 
And as I said in the beginning, that Facebook Live um, children's sermon has already been done. What do you think about some Facebook videos for our little ones, maybe a story and some songs? Could we do a virtual Easter egg hunt? Have you thought about doing a daily devotional for folks at work, a way to escape the pressure for a minute? And then I got a call on Saturday. If anyone calls needing food, meds, etc., I can pick those up. I'm in town almost every day. Where is God? Right there in those post-it notes that I just read to you, God is at work through us. But it's not just in times of crisis. We have folks who mail cards and letters all the time to those who are sick and who are homebound or who haven't been to church in a while. We have folks who are continually planning things for our children and our youth, ministries with our kids. Our United Methodist men and our United Methodist women have mission budgets that would rival some large churches, and they meet those budgets every year. The list of missions that they support is simply too long for me to list. Our Sunday school teachers plan and study. Brittany and the choir practice. Our outreach team continues to reach out to local schools, supplying needs, feeding kids, and supporting teachers. And we pray and we encourage and we love. Where is God? Well, God is right there in every act of compassion, every act of mercy, and every act of care. God is not limited and can do anything, literally anything. But as we see in Scripture, as we see in our history, as we see in our present moment, God seems to work primarily through human instruments. As followers of Christ, we are God bearers. And there is nothing insignificant in the ministries that we do. God works in the world through people. Now, Lauren Diego, and I shared with you, she's one of my favorite recording artists right now. Um, she has a rather new song entitled Rescue. And I would encourage you to look it up after, um, after the message. <clears throat> but I want to share the lyrics with you um, as a poem. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You're not hopeless. Though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS. I will send out an army to find you. In the middle of the darkest night, it's true. I will rescue you. There's no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true. I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you. In the middle of the hardest fight. It's true. I will rescue you. I hear the whisper underneath your breath. I hear you whisper. You have nothing left. I will send out an army to find you. In the middle of the darkest night, it's true. I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you. In the middle of the hardest fight, it's true. I will rescue you. I will rescue you. And as beautiful as these lyrics are, if we don't hear a call to us in them, I fear we will miss something very important. God rescues. There is no doubt. But how often does that rescue come through ordinary people like me and you? Who is it that is in need of rescue today? Who is it today that needs us to be Jesus to them? Who is it that will be a God bearer today? When we heed God's call, lives can be saved. Who is depending on us to be God's hands and feet and voice? Where is God? Now, well, whenever we offer grace and love and compassion and support and care and encouragement in the name of Jesus, we become instruments of God's work in the world. We become Jesus with skin on. We become God bearers. God is not limited, but God seems to work primarily through human instruments. Now, I want to close today with a, a lighthearted story, but a story that helps us realize just how God will use most anyone. 
there's a woman and she is in a parking garage and it's dark and she's locked her keys in her car and she finds a, a coat hanger laying in the corner and so she uses the coat hanger and she tries to break into her car and she's just not successful. Her cell phone has no service so she can't call anyone for help and she's beginning to panic and so she prayed, dear God, please send somebody to help me. And within what seemed like just a few minutes, this old rusty car comes around the corner and the music is thumping and the, the smoke is bowling up behind the car and the car pulls up in front of hers and it stops. The driver turned down the music and he gets out of his car and he begins to walk toward the woman. He's a huge man with tattoos down both arms and he has a long beard and he walks up to the man or to the woman and the woman is terrified and in her mind she thought is this who God is sending me or am I about to die so when the man got to her he asked her in a very deep and and raspy voice can I help you ma'am and without giving it much thought she said can you break into my car for me and he said sure I'm pretty good at that and so she handed him the coat hanger and in just a few minutes he had her door open and she couldn't help herself. She threw her arms around him and she hugged him and she said, thank you so much. I didn't know what I was going to do. You're such a nice man. He replied, lady, I'm not a nice man. I just got out of prison today. I served two years for auto theft. I've actually only been out for a few hours. The woman hugged the man again as she shouted out with joy, thank you, God, for sending a professional. You see, God is not limited and can do anything, literally anything. But God seems to work primarily through human instruments, common, everyday people like you and me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Will you pray with me? Uh -oh. God, thank you so much for um, for bearing with me as I, I try to send this good news out over um, the technology that I'm just really not any good at. And God, I pray that you will bless this time that we have had together. And God, I pray that you will continue to send us ideas of ways that we can be connected even as we are scattered about our community and our homes. God, we know that it is through your Holy Spirit that even scattered, we are connected. We thank you, God, for the privilege of being your children. In the name above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope this time has been a blessing to you. Um, I hope you will take this time of being at home um, to spend time, spend the Sabbath day enjoy um, scripture, enjoy spending time with your family, and maybe even take a nap today. Um, and as always, um, remember that you are loved by God, and go and be the church. Amen.